uh, mainly work on food safety and uh, food microbiology. Uh, but recently, we also started research work about food authentication. So we try to identify the adulterated food or food fraud. I think food industry and agri-food industry is a very critical sector in Canadian economy. Mm -hmm. And the safety of the food commodities is quite, quite critical because we try to prevent any potential foodborne uh, illnesses or disease uh, to mm -hmm. the consumers. So therefore, the detection and the control about the food contamination is very, very critical. So my main focus is actually on food safety. So we ta actually tackle problems associated with uh, the pathogens that can be found in foods and make people sick. And from there, we understand why these foodborne pathogens can be there and cause diseases in human and how to prevent these problems from happening. So for example, currently a major project that's going on in our lab is focusing on using bacterial phages to tackle foodborne pathogen contamination. For those of you who don't know, phages are actually viruses that will eat bacteria and by doing this we can directly and indirectly reduce the burden of the use of antibiotics because it's a novel approach that can help with um, reducing the pathogens that are making people sick. So I look at um what we call enzyme mechanism and how if we change their composition or structure, how it affects their activity. And so the idea is to try and understand what they do well enough so that we can uh, develop inhibitors, for instance, that can be used for therapies or as um, to control that enzyme activity. And the, other, the other area that I'm very interested in is uh, carbohydrates. And so the enzymes I work on work on carbohydrates, and I'm also interested in carbohydrate analysis. I think that in the long run, it has potential to uh, help people that have uh, diseases. So uh, the enzymes that I work on uh, can be involved in some genetically transmitted diseases. And so it'd be very cool if we could um, understand enough, like I said, and develop an inhibitor so that it could actually be used to help people. And so we've been isolating wine yeast strains. Um, by collecting grapes from the Okanagan and then bringing them back to the lab here and in inducing spontaneous fermentation. And then we isolate the yeast strains and right now we're trying to take a close look as to whether they're related to strains from other parts of the world like Europe or, or other, any other viticulture region. And so we're doing whole genome sequencing um, in association with the um, Michael Smith Genome Sequencing Center. Uh, the second part of my research program is more um, is also working with yeast. So both programs use um, the budding yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So Saccharomyces cerevisiae is an industrial yeast that's used for fermentations such, such as wine fermentation, but it's also used as a model system in basic research to try to understand how cells proceed through the cell cycle, how cells divide, anything you can think of with regards to basic cell biology has been studied in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So what we're looking at there is we're looking at a transposon, which is a mobile genetic element that jumps into the genome and it's called the TY1 element, and it's actually a retro transposon, so it's similar in structure and life cycle to, uh, to retroviruses such as the um, HIV-1 virus. And so by studying how it uh, replicates in yeast, we can make some observations that might be useful for um, other retroviruses that can affect humans.